welcome back to the channel guys my name's Andy R and this is the Brotherhood of Men now for you existing subscribers and you who've seen this channel and watched my content before know this channel is solely dedicated at getting you guys the best outcome in your life and I do that by what well, one making this channel and two making this content so I can bring you information a point of view a perspective that you probably haven't heard before and if you have just another way of hearing it so that's for you new viewers you existing subscribers you are amazing thank you for your support you guys already know what this channel is all about because you subscribed you you supported me you joined the brotherhood those of you who are not subscribed what are you doing why aren't you subscribe subscribed come on hit the subscribe button down there just there don't forget to hit the bell notification because that way you will uh, not miss out on future content and boy you don't want to miss out on the content i've got coming for you so i promised quite some time ago now that I was going to make this video and it's five more reasons why you shouldn't date single mothers. Now the first five I think you'll all agree were pretty impressive. If you're still dating single mothers after watching those first five reasons which were solid reasons I'm going to give you another five. <laughs> I mean come on when you're going to get the message you shouldn't be dating single mothers so let's get into this number one daddy issues daddy issues are gonna hurt because you are not the father so at some point that child if it's a baby it it's not going to be so prevalent it's not going to happen so much but as that child gets older, or if you're thinking of dating a single mother who's got older children, as in their, you know, 10, 11, 12, into their teens, whatever, you're going to hear this phrase a lot. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my father. You're not my daddy. And they're right. And they're right to tell you that you are not their father. You aren't. What are you doing trying to raise them? Where's the father? Why isn't he there raising them? He's probably not there raising them because the mother, that woman that you're attracted to and are, are thinking of dating, or are dating, probably kicked him out. What do you think your chances are, seeing as you're not actually the father? Well, who knows? So that's number one. You're not the daddy, and they're going to tell you. They've already got daddy issues because that father's not there in their life. The, the moment you step in to try and be a father, to show some guidance, especially to a young boy, and he rebels against you, at first he may suck up your attention because he's absolutely bone dry of male attention, learning what it is to be a man. So maybe at the beginning, if he's a young lad, he's going to suck up that male attention. He's going to bond with you and that's going to hurt you later. But when he turns around and says, because you've tried to discipline him some way, you've tried to show him guidance, show him where he's going wrong morally, and he rebels against that, you're going to hear that phrase. You're not my dad. You can't tell me what to do. I'm telling my mum. And don't get me wrong, she will back her child, because it is her child, not yours. So that was number one. And I think you'll agree that is a pretty good reason. And I don't... I, I do understand why you're attracted to some of these single mothers, because some of them are absolutely stunning. I mean, truly, some of them are beautiful got great bodies, beautiful face. But ask yourself this question, because this isn't one of the reasons, but just ask yourself this question. Is that body as good as a woman who hasn't given birth? Who hasn't had her internal organs change around, her sex organs completely... I think it was described to me once when uh, I was there at the birth of my daughter and I was saying to a to a friend of mine and uh, and he said I cried at my son's birth this was my friend talking not me he said I cried at my son's birth and I went yeah it's quite an emotional time I said I teared up a bit he says no not that he says when I saw that baby coming out 
out. I thought to myself, it's like somebody set on fire my favourite amusement park. <laughs> I kind of know what he meant, but seriously. And the, the, the brain chemistry changes when a woman's pregnant as well. Uh, it's actually, the, the, there's such a thing as called baby brain. It's when a woman becomes very forgetful and sort of dreaming off into, because so many endorphins and so many chemicals are being released into the brain to get them ready for the pain of birth. So their pain levels drop significantly in the last trimester up to birth. So that, There's that old joke where it goes, I can prove to you that a kick in the balls is far more painful than giving birth. And it goes like this. Like I say, these are none of the five reasons. These are just a bit of an aside. It goes like this. If you meet a woman who's got one child, at some point she's said, I'd love another one. If she's got more than one child, she has said, I'd love another one, and gone through it, knowing the pain that she was going to go through at giving birth. I've yet to meet a guy who got kicked in the balls, who's gone at some point later, I'd love another one. <laughs> anyway, back to the reasons. So there's your argument about why kicking the balls is far more painful than giving birth. Anyway, back to the five reasons. Number two, similar to the first one about daddy issues, Number two is the real father, if he's still in that child's life. You've got to deal with him. Even if it's superfluously, even if it's superficially, you've got to deal with him. And you've got to deal with him because he still sees his child. He's still in, still in the life of that child. Do you think he's going to talk you up to the heavens to that child when he gets visitation? That child is obviously going to say to, Hey, Daddy, Mummy's got a new boyfriend. Oh, has he? Yeah, he does this with me and he does that with me. That father's not going to be happy because he knows he's getting pushed out of his child's life. He only gets visitation certain days. You're going to be there all the time. Do you think he's welcoming you with open arms? No, that's his child. He sees you as a rival. Maybe he doesn't want to get back with the mother, but for some reason they've split up, obviously. But he still wants to be in his child's life. Do you think he's going to talk you up? Say, yeah, you should listen to that guy. He sounds like a real solid bloke. No, he's going to say, just remember he ain't your father. Like the first one, you ain't my dad. So you've got that grief to deal with. Why would you put yourself in that situation? Like I say, some of these women are beautiful and you're attracted to beauty. We men are, we're visual creatures. So why would you put yourself in that situation? Anyway, let's carry on. Number three, victim mentality. This is something women have learned over the last few generations that they're always the victim. Doesn't matter what's happened, they take no accountability for it and make themselves the victim. I've got a video coming up shortly and it's called Women Tell Great Stories. And it will explain to you about part of, partly about that, about victim mentality, but how women get together and they tell themselves these great stories about how everything's gonna, I'm not gonna go into too much detail in it, so, Get yourself subscribed if you're not already and hit the bell notification. That's where you get notified when I upload new content and you won't miss out on it. So, yeah, victim mentality. That woman has split up with the original father, whether they're married, he's just a baby father, whatever. She split up with him. She's probably already told you the story of it and I can almost guarantee that in it, she turned out to be the victim, not the instigator, although we know that in divorces, 70%, well, it's more than that now, 70% of divorces are instigated by women. So that's a woman quite literally wrecking her own home. If they weren't married, why did you not wait until you gave your womb up to somebody? You chose that guy, but she's probably told you the story about how he was an absolute monster. He was the worst kind of scumbag in the world. Trust me, guys, when she gets rid of you, you're going to be the new monster that she tells the next guy about.
That's right, you might be the, the knight in shining armour, the saint with the halo right now while she's tapping your resources, but when she's finished with you, when she decides that you're no longer the right guy for her and wants to move on because somebody else has made her coochie tingle, she's going to turn around and tell that new guy what a monster you are. You will be the future monster. Because women have this beautiful victim mentality. It's a way of completely negating any responsibility for what went wrong in previous relationships. It's easier to say, I was the victim. So the victim mentality, you've got that to look forward to. And you've got it in spades. I mean, most women have this mentality, but you've got it in spades with a single mother because she's been heroic and brave and she's the victim because she's having to raise this child alone. And we hear it all the time from media, social media, we hear it, in, we see it in movies and all that lot, how strong and brave that single mother is raising that child on their own. Nowhere do they ever explain how did she become single? Why is she single? Why is she strong and brave? Why isn't she married? Why did she abandon the, the marriage? Why did... and on and on and on and on. They can't all have been monsters, but the woman probably is. So that's number three, that victim mentality. So what's number four? Well, I think you'll agree the first three were pretty good. And if you haven't watched my original video, Five Reasons Why You Shouldn't Date a Single Mother, go and watch that, please. Because if you're contemplating it, and after these two videos you're still contemplating it, I'm afraid you're beyond help. But anyway, number four. She can do you harm. What do I mean by that? That child, at some point, is going to rebel up against you. Now, if that child turns round and says, he's been touching me inappropriately, or he smacked me, or he's doing this when you're not here, who is that mother going to believe? Going to believe you, who's not the father, he's a stranger in the house, really, and all you're doing there is serving her needs, which are making sure that she's cared for, you're scratching that itch that she's got in a coochie, and you're supplying finances for her to raise her child. Who's she going to believe? Is she going to believe you, or is she going to believe her child? A good mother, and this is where that um, mama bear comes into play, and she's going to do the right thing. She's going to believe her child. Maybe she'll come to you and say, so-and-so, her child, has said such-and-such such about you. Is it true? She might do that, but then again, she might, victim mentality, start thinking to herself, oh, if I, if I confront him about this, maybe he'll get violent with me. So what she does is she contacts social services, child protection, the police, and gets you in trouble. Even if... When all said and done, it turns out the child's been lying. Do you think she's going to welcome you back into the house? No. No, 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 no. You're gone. Because she doesn't want to then have to call her own child a liar. She doesn't want to have you there looking at her child with disappointment, maybe a little bit of hatred, because that child tried to get you in real trouble. So, you're gone. She can harm you. When it turns out that you did nothing wrong, who's believing you now? It's already out there that you did something wrong. People maybe saw you get arrested. Maybe saw you taken off in handcuffs. And of course, they're going to ask, what happened? Oh, it turned out he was this kind of monster. When you weren't. So she and her child can harm you. How do you think you're going to look to your employee with that hanging over your head? Even after it's all said and done and all of it's cleared up and you are innocent, do you think you're going to be looked at in the same light? Of course you're not. So why put yourself in harm's way like that? These, I'm giving you these reasons for a, for a very good reason. And that is, you've got to protect yourself. I say at the end of my videos, Look after yourself or protect yourself or whatever, because if you don't, who will? And that's true. If you're not looking out for your own back, 
what, what are you doing? Anyway, that's pre reason four. So, the fifth and final reason, and that including the first video, in makes ten reasons, and all of them damn solid. She has no respect for you. Why would she respect somebody who's been prepared to step in and take care of somebody's child that isn't theirs? The daddy's still out there. He's doing his bit. She sees you as a resource. That's not respect. She sees you as a group of assets. One, can he perform in the bedroom? Yes, he can perform in the bedroom. Okay, I'll keep him around. Now I've introduced him to my child. Is he going to start paying for my child? Yes, he's started paying for my child. He's not the father, so I don't respect him as the father because he's not. As soon as you try to correct it, how dare you correct my child? That's from the woman, not from the real father, which you'll get that as well. He might confront you at some point in the future, go, who the hell do you think you are? Telling my kid what to do. It's not your kid. She has no respect for you. How can she have respect for you? So that's number five. Five reasons, five more reasons, why you should not date a single mother. If you find yourself in the position that you are dating, and, and a lot of women are doing this now, they're not telling you they're single mothers. It can be months down the line, you're dating, they'll make up excuses why they're not available. Oh, well, let's make arrangements for some time in the week. Oh, no, I'm not available this weekend, I've got to go with her. And then you find out she's a single mother. Why did she lie about it? Because she knows that once you find out she's a single mother, you're probably in the wind, you're gone. Because you're bright, you're smart, you're not stupid enough to be lumbered with all of that for somebody who's nothing to do with you. You're not dating the child, you're dating the mother. And then find out that she's got a child. It's at that point that you should walk away because if you accept it then, you'd be lied to, you, you know, all that time she never mentioned. That's her number one priority is her child. So as I say, five more reasons why you shouldn't date a single mother. What do you think of them? Do you think they're good, valid points? Have you watched the first video? Because if you haven't watched the first video, five reasons not to date a single mother, go back and watch it because truly it's great content. I mean, I would say that. It's my content. And as I said before, I would be perfect if it wasn't for my modesty. Anyway, my name's Andy R. This is the Brotherhood of Men. I'll talk to you soon. I'm going for a cup of tea because I definitely think I've earned one. You guys take care of yourself, because if you don't, who will? Bye now.